So those record-breaking crowds for the Euros this summer, how much do you think that will impact the WSL this season? I think it'll impact it massively. I think you've already seen it with ticket sales and clubs announcing that we're playing at the men's stadiums and things like that. And I think, you know, we'll have a lot of fans who want to come out, especially with England, the home team winning the Euros um, and playing in England. We'll have a lot of fans wanting to see, you know, the big names on the big stage. And I think it will be, I hope that we use this momentum really to accelerate the women's game even further. So how big a moment do you think uh, the Euros was for the women's game? Massive. I think if you think about the World Cup in France um, a few years ago, you know, a lot of momentum was taken from that about the success and, you know, the broadcasting rights that were seen. Um, and I think now having more broadcasting rights the last year, but then seeing record number of people watching the Euros, you know, breaking numbers of people watching the men's Wimbledon final, which is obviously a massive sport here. Um, and you're seeing that people actually will want to watch TV if We'll want to watch women's football if it's on TV um, and I think we can really just continue to use that momentum and I think in a few years to come it'll just it won't be considered you know a outlier it'll just be an expectation now for us to be on telly. So did you go to any of the matches yourself? This I did yeah obviously I had some, a few teammates there so I went to a few games at Lee um, you know watched the game at Sheffield which wasn't too far um, and it was it was fantastic the support that the you know the countries received traveling from afar or you know England support so I really enjoyed it. So you've got four Euros winners in the squad now. What's it like to play with them and what kind of characters are they? Oh, they I mean, they're great characters. They're not only great footballers, but they're great people as well. Um, and for them to win the Euros of the home nation, I mean, it was just, you're, you're over the moon for them. Obviously, as a Scottish player, I was a bit disappointed that we weren't in the Euros. But at the same time, um, at the end of the day, the biggest winner out of the entire thing was women's football. Um, so despite England winning, women's football really won in the sense of people are now talking about it in the streets. You're seeing, you know, it on on programs, advertising on, the, on billboards and things like that. So um, chuffed for them, but also really chuffed for, for our sport in general. So we really got to see that relationship between Ella Toon and Alessia Russo during the Euros. What are they like to, to play with? Uh, they're honestly, they're, they're, they're fantastic people um, on and off the pitch. To see them come off the bench and make such an impact and, you know, they were what I would completely call a game changer for England. Um, when England struggled to try and break down teams, you knew that they were going to come on and, they made, and make a difference and they did exactly that. And it was exactly what, at the time, England needed, that little bit of spark off the bench. And they were, people were saying, why aren't they starting? But at the end of the day, like, they made such an impact coming off the bench that... It worked. It worked so well for England. And now they can be game changers for Manchester United this season. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, they they are you know starters for us here at United because they they do so well from minute one um, and they kick on for the rest of the game and they're they're such important people to have in our team from the back to the front. You know, from Mary and goal and and Tatuni and less up front and now Nikita as well. So, what are your targets for the season, both personally and for the club as well? Uh, individually, I want to kick on from last season. You know, I got um, a lot of games. I want to get more goals. I want to get more assists. I want to help the team win. Um, that's always my main ambition. Um, whichever way I can help the team, whether that's hitting the back of the net or setting people up or whatever I can do, I just want to help this team excel. We've got such a good group. Um, and obviously, our ambitions as a club are to finish higher and higher in the table. We disappointingly missed out on Champions League qualification spot last year, so that's definitely going to be in our eye top three, um, ideally top two, so that we miss out on the the tough qualification bit. But just getting our you know name in that hat and getting the chance to play against top opposition in Europe that's what we want to do and we did that you know last weekend playing um, PSG and beating them and obviously playing Bayern Munich who were a very well organized team um, unfortunately didn't get the win but it was a great experience for us so obviously we saw a full Old Trafford for the first game of the women's Euros Manchester United are playing Aston Villa in December. How much are you looking forward to playing there? I know you played Everton last season in the, in yeah. the stadium as well. Yeah, loads. Um, I'm quite lucky. It'll be my third time playing at Old Trafford. When I was at West Ham, um, we played against United there. So obviously that was in front of no crowd. Uh, against Everton was in front of 20 odd thousand. Um, and now hopefully I expect us to get many more people um, at the game in December. So really excited for that. It's a great opportunity for us. We love playing on the pitch. Um, and just want to get loads of people out there and support us and you know put on a show and show that we belong to play in places like Old Trafford and that we can really get the support. How does it feel different as a player from playing at Lee Sports Village to playing at Old Trafford? Does it feel like a massive step up? Does, do you feel more nervous playing there? No, I don't think you feel nervous. I think at the end of the day, Lee does feel quite homey for us. You know, we get, we do get a good attendance at Lee. You can hear the fans constantly throughout the game. Um, it's more of a enclosed space, whereas obviously Old Trafford's, it's massive. Um, and we hope to fill it as much as we can. Um, and obviously last season, I think we filled pretty much the entire bottom sections, which 
Um, it just it was fun to be able to you know hear a loud crowd. But sort of when you play in football, you you do kind of block that out. Like you don't actually hear what's going on until the ball goes out, and then you you refocus and you actually hear everything again. Um, so I don't think it's nerves at all. If anything, it's just excitement. So there's uh, ten Australians playing in the WSL this season. Who stands out for you out of the Australians in the league? I mean, I think there's obviously the obvious one, Sam Kerr, um, extremely clinical, um, a very good number nine that likes to get in behind and hits the back of the net a lot of times. Um, and yeah, she's obviously a great player. We, <laughs> we obviously want to contain her um, as much as we can, but you know, there's, it's good that a lot of Australians are coming over here. It, it elevates the league. We've seen a lot more internationals come over to our league, um, which you know, speaks volume of, of what we're a part of here and what's being created. Um, people want to come here. You've seen a lot of people come from Spain um, and various other places in Europe and a bit of a stint from you know, people from America and things like that. So it just shows how, how competitive the WSL is. So if an Australian came over to visit Manchester, what's the one thing that they should do? Oh gosh, you're asking a non-Manchester <laughs> native here. Um, what do you do in your spare time here? Do you know what? I think there's a lot of naturey places to go and visit here. Um, you've got the Lake District, which isn't far, Peak District. Um, I love to take my dog on dog walks. So, and I feel like Australians are quite outdoorsy, so they might enjoy coming up here. And um, there's loads of, of great places to go on walks and hikes and things like that. Maybe not the weather so much, though. But. Well, just, yeah, they probably won't like the weather, but put a rain jacket <laughs> on, you'll be fine. <laughs> so a uh, little bit of a chat about the Women's World Cup. Obviously, it's in Australia and New Zealand next year. Scotland are guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, I think. Correct, yeah, we've definitely finished second in our group. Now it's so we play Faroe Islands um, next week or the week after coming up. Um, and yeah, if we can put some goal differential in there, we have a chance of finishing top three of the playoffs, um, which is a big advantage because then you miss a game. Um, so that's what our aim is, but definitely in the playoffs. And we're, we're, we're wanting to be there. We were disappointed to miss out on the Euros. And uh, it'll be a great opportunity to obviously play in Australia and New Zealand. And we're, we want our name to be in that hat, in that draw. Has seeing uh, the reaction to the Euros this summer given you that extra motivation as well? Yeah, I mean we were we were fuming that we didn't that we didn't qualify for the Euros. We were really really disappointed. We had the group to do it. We had the we had the group of players to do it, but we also had the group set up to do it. We um, there was no reason that we shouldn't have topped that group, and that was really disappointing for us. And we're sort of using that momentum to kick on in this World Cup qualifying group. Um, obviously, we had Spain, which is a very tough opposition. So the goal for us realistically would have been to finish second. Um, and we've done that now and we've put ourselves in a good spot points wise. So we hopefully can kick on in the playoffs. Well, fingers crossed you do qualify. Have you been to Australia before? Never. I'm really, really looking. For, well, I'm saying looking forward to, but I'm really hoping that we get there. Um, one for, you know, the experience of playing in a World Cup. That's what you dream of as a little kid. But also Australia has been a bucket list of a place that I've wanted to visit. So be looking forward to that as well. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more. So why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app?